Hey YouTube, welcome back to Tinkro Tools. Over the past year, we've had several videos featuring installation drill drivers or multi-chuck drill drivers. And each time I've got someone asking, when are we gonna see the Festool CSX? Well, the wait is over. We are gonna talk about the CXS today. So let's get into that on Tinker with Tools. All right, so this is the Festool CSX. If you have seen the Milwaukee installation drill driver, this one is styled very closely after the Festool version, but this tool has actually been out for a long time. This is almost a 10 year old tool, if not a little bit older at this point. Now, what changes have happened during those 10 years? Well, very little, to be honest with you. They did update the batteries to have a larger capacity, the battery in question is a 10.8 volt battery. So it is going to be competitive with the 12 volt tools, not necessarily the 18 volt ones. Now when Festool came out with this originally, this was very innovative on the market, but time has come and gone and this is no longer a brand new tool. So how does it stack up against the more modern competition, Milwaukee DeWalt Bosch and even the German Metabo that we're gonna show a little bit today. And is it still worth it to buy this in its current state in 2023. So now what makes this tool unique? Well, as I mentioned, it does have removable chucks that allow you to adapt the tool to what you're doing. This one specifically comes with kind of your quick insert bit call it. We'll talk about that more in a second. A right angle attachment that helps you get around corners and into perhaps tighter spaces and then kind of more of your standard drill check. Now, as I mentioned, we are going to talk a little bit more about this. This is not your typical quarter inch hex bit. In fact, if you try and put in something that's quarter inch hex, you'll notice it doesn't fit at all. That's because this is what Festool calls Centrotech. Centrotech is their own proprietary bit and it actually is different than your quarter inch hex. They do provide in the box a adapter that goes from Centrotech two quarter inch hex. It is not a locking bit adapter. It is simply magnetic, but it does allow you to use it with other bits. If you're looking to use it with those proprietary bits, be prepared to pay a little bit of money. They do have a lot of great options out there, but they are costly just like this tool. We'll cover price a little bit later. So aside from that, what are you getting? It is a brush motor. It does offer roughly 140 inch pounds peak torque which is significantly lower than what you're gonna be seeing from its brushless competition nowadays. And it does offer perhaps lower speed than some of them at only 1300 RPMs in speed two and 450 in speed one. Aside from that, the ergonomics are pretty solid. And there's a reason why a lot of people have modeled their tools after this is because it is incredible to use and it really does work nice. But we wanna know how is it going to stack up against more modern competition? Well, we're gonna go over some performance stuff in the testing. We'll talk about how it compares and what some of the strengths and weaknesses are. And then we'll come back up here, round out the pros and cons, and give you a recommendation on if this tool still makes sense in 2023. All right, so as I mentioned, this is the Centrotech system. If you get a close up there, you can see that the indents are a little bit longer. It is a different diameter. It is not quick insert, but once it is in, there is virtually no play there. It works incredibly well. We are gonna start just with some small drywall screws and we're just gonna see how it handles those in both speed one and speed two. And here's speed two. Now let's go ahead and try out some of our counterparts. First the Milwaukee. And speed two. Now the DeWalt in speed one in speed two. So something readily noticeable about the DeWalt is just, it is faster and it is more powerful than any of the other drills here. All right, now the Bosch in speed one. And the Bosch in speed two. Bosch and Milwaukee are pretty good blend, uh, blend of having power and a little bit more speed, but still being pretty controllable. All right, now we're gonna be talking about cabinet screws. We are just gonna do kind of a speed driving test. These are like two inch. I would say this is gonna be a pretty realistic task for it in terms of what you're gonna be driving day in and day out with these. So in speed two, driving at home just fine. Okay, Milwaukee. Definitely more powerful. Okay, now the DeWalt. Okay, so DeWalt, plenty of power. It is going to overdrive it if you want it to. 
I would say the Milwaukee and the Festool feel most similar in that test. The Festool is a brush tool and the others are going to be brushless. Let's go ahead and try some of our brush tools just to see what they will do. So now this is the Milwaukee non-fuel screwdriver. It is a single speed, it's 500 RPM. Now this is the Metabo Powermax BS12Q. This is their brushed model of kind of their installation drill driver. For a brush model, that is more powerful than what the Festool is, I think. This one is actually dirt cheap. This is $59. Um, I picked it up from Ohio Power Tool. It is almost always on sale. All right, now this is a three inch wood screw. Um, we are gonna be go ahead and driving this in just to see kind of what the limitations are and if any of them tap out on the three inch. It actually will not drive at home in speed two. That kind of shows you the limitations of that tool. And now do the Milwaukee. Obviously started to bog down there at the very end. I suspect we'll have no problem with the DeWalt. DeWalt has no issue driving home three inch screws. If you do a lot of those, the others can do it. That one feels at home doing it. And now the Bosch. Let's do the Metabo. Let's go ahead and do the old brush Milwaukee. I know it's not an insulation drill driver, but it gives you a comparison of a brush tool that is rated roughly the same power as the Festool. I'm gonna go ahead and guess that if we run the Festool in speed one, we will see it do roughly that same result. Very comparable to the older brushed Milwaukee in speed one. And I think that really is kind of a summary of the performance is you are not getting top tier performance with this tool. It is going to be nicer to use while you're using it within those bounds, but it's going to reach its performance limits quite a bit sooner than what you'd be expecting. For the drilling, I have put the drill check on there. So we are just gonna be in speed two going through a piece of wood that's a little bit bigger than a two by four. Okay, and that is a 7 seconds inch bit. You can really push on the DeWalt. That's what we're gonna do for performance testing. Let's go back to the bench and talk about some of the pros and cons real quick. All right, so when it comes down to performance is not going to be the strong suit of the CXS. I don't know that any of us were in, under the impression that it was going to be. It can do a lot of the jobs that it was intended for, for the people that this drill was designed for. I'm talking about cabinet installers, uh, kind of that finished carpentry when you're just doing smaller stuff just to kind of wrap things up. Um, even just a punch list items, I think this is going to be a great little tool to have with you because it is going to give you a lot of versatility in a small ergonomic package and I think that is going to be nice for a lot of people. But performance wise, obviously the times have passed it up and it is long overdue for a refresh with potentially a little bit more power and speed just to keep it more relevant. So then let's talk about the pros and cons to it. Obviously a pro, highly ergonomic, great handle, good feel, easy to use, very easy to pick up and just know what you're doing with it. There's not a learning curve like there is with the Milwaukee with that forward and reverse selector. It's not something you have to get used to. This tool was designed in a very well thought out way and I think that's going to be great for it. If you don't love the C handle design, they do make the TXS, which is the exact same tool, just with a different handle and grip on it, but it does offer the same functionality. Another pro is going to be the sustainer system. We'll give you some pictures of that really quick and just kind of show you. It obviously is well thought out, and I love that Festool allows for future expansion into their lineup in the existing package. So ready out of the box, there's going to be places to store this drill and the attachments that came with it. It does give me future expansion for additional bits and accessories that I'm going to buy, and I really do like that about it. Overall, what are the cons? Well, the performance is probably the biggest and most glaring con that is there. Uh, actually, I take that back. It's one of the most glaring. The price is going to be the other one. This kit is $325. Now you can get a version of it, it's 269, but you are gonna give up the right angle attachment. 
take that for what it's worth. Is that worth the extra, you know, $50, $60 to you? That is an expensive tool. To give you some comparison, full price, I believe in a kit form, I believe the Milwaukee is usually right around $229, so it is cheaper than that. The DeWalt is going to be $189 with a single battery. The Bosch is $199 with two batteries. And then there's the platform you're buying into. With the Festool, it is this and the Festool TXS, which is basically the same thing. There are no other tools that you're buying in there, and there have been no updates to these tools in roughly 10 years. So is it a platform that's gonna be around for a long time? I don't know. Is it going to continue to get updates? Who knows? Now the other point when I mentioned price and cost is going to be the cost of the bits and the accessories. If you want to be in the Centrotech system and take advantage of all the wonder that is Centrotech, you're gonna to have to buy their bits. The cost for those bits is more than what you're used to paying for standard bits at the hardware store. I know that the full set, which includes 94 pieces, comes in a sustainer, it's very nice and well packaged, is $240. That's a lot to spend on bits when you're already spending 325 on the tool itself. There are some third party sellers that will sell Centratech compatible stuff. I can't vouch for any of them, I have not tried them, but there are some other retailers out there. All right, so when it comes down to it with this product, is it worth buying in 2023? Well, if you've tried other Festool products and you like them, I think you will like this product. It is very familiar to Festool owners. It operates in a way that you'd expect a Festool drill to work. I do think it runs nice, and as long as you're using it for its intended purpose, which is kind of that smaller installation type items and not big giant fasteners, I don't think you're gonna be let down by it. Now, if you've never tried Festool before and you don't have an inclination towards that, I think that there are a ton of great options out there where you're going to be able to get more performance for cheaper dollars and buy into platforms that are gonna be more thorough in the tool offerings that they have, especially on the DeWalt and the Milwaukee. I think those two are gonna be very big and com competitive in the coming years, and you're gonna be able to have a full host of tools in those lineups versus the Festool. This is all you're getting when it comes to the Festool. I would love to see them update this. I would love to see a newer model come out, a brushless model perhaps. In the comments down below, let me know what you think of Festool in general. Are you pro Festool or are you against them and everything that they stand for? Go ahead and let me know. I'd love to hear your opinions on that. Let me know what you think of CXS and if you have questions about it, leave them down below as well. If you like the video, go ahead and hit that like button. And if you haven't already, please consider subscribing so you don't miss any content that I put out. Thanks for watching these videos. I really appreciate all the support. Until next time, I'll catch you on Tinker with Tools.